everybody. Today we are going to be annotating an article. It is called Super Black Fish Can Disappear in the Deep Sea's Darkness. Now this is an article that is written for high schoolers, but I just want to model how I as a teacher would be annotating a text that I was reading. So if I was reading a book, if I was reading an article, um, in order to practice my good habits of being a good reader, then I would make sure that I had my trusty pins with me, my pencils, whatever you guys decide to use. Um, and that's what I'm going to be taking notes on. So I'm just going to pretend like nobody is watching me, like nobody is here. And I'm going to model for you how good readers annotate while they are reading. So let's get started. This article, once again, is called Super Black Fish Can Disappear in the Deep Sea Darkness. Make sure you can see it. Okay. It's amazing how dark it is deep underwater. So it might take more than a little light to see some of the planet's darkest fish that live there. We see things because they reflect light. I think that's important. I'm going to put a blue star. However, these fish have ultra black skin. That is super cool. Ultra black skin. It soaks up almost all light that hits it. Their skin makes these fish almost invisible. That surprises me. I'm going to put a big O-M-G. Scientists described how the ultra black skin works in the July 16th issue of Current Biology. The finding might inspire new designs for ultra black materials used in telescopes and fabrics. That's pretty cool. Little of the sun's light reaches the deep sea. However, some living things can create their own light. These creatures are called bioluminescent. I've never heard of that word. I'm going to circle it so I can go back and look it up later. Bioluminescent. Fireflies are one common example. Most deep sea creatures are bioluminescent. They help brighten the water's inky darkness. For things living at these depths, trying to swim without being seen is hard. There is nowhere to hide, says marine biologist Karen Osborne. It's like trying to play hide and seek on a football field. And I really think that is funny. I'm going to put it LOL. It's like playing hide and seek on a football field. There's nowhere to hide. Osborne works at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. Next page. Enter fish with ultra black skin. These fish are camouflaged. I'm going to circle it, camouflaged or hidden, all right, I found the meeting, I'm going to check, by blending into the darkness around them. The ultra black skin may hide fish from predators. These are animals that want to catch and eat them for food. It may also help the fish sneak up on their prey. These are the animals that the ultra black fish want to catch and eat. Osborne was part of a team that caught 16 species of ultra black, ultra black fish. OMG 16. These fish had been living at depths of up to 2,000 meters or 6,562 feet. That is over a mile down. Oh my gosh. The team measured how much light reflected off the fish. They studied the skin using sensitive microscopes. They also calculated how the skin might absorb light. Melanosomes Melanosomes. That's in the title. I don't know what that is. The team found that ultra blackness comes from a layer of closely packed structures just below the skin surface. These structures are called melanosomes. Let me go back and reread. The team found that the ultra blackness comes from a layer of closely packed structures just below the skin surface. Oh, there's the answer. That's because they have a dark pigment called melanin inside of them. A substance color is due to a chemical compounds called pigments. Melanin is a dark type of pigment found in the eyes, skin, hair, feathers, and scales of animals. It gives our skin its color, and it's also responsible for the ultra black fish. The melasomes soak up nearly all light that hits them. That is super cool. Light is a type of energy that travels in waves. The wavelength is the distance between two peaks of the wave. Different wavelengths produce different colors. Red light has a longer wavelength than blue light. For example, the team found that the, melon the melanosomes absorbed a remarkable amount of light. They absor absorbed up to 99.95% OMG. 
of the light the fish would have around them in the ocean. The structures absorbed wavelengths of the sunlight reaching those depths in the ocean. They also absorbed wavelengths of light produced by bioluminescent, there's that word again, bioluminescent deep sea creatures, unpigmented gaps. Other dark colored fish have unpigmented gaps between melanosomes. This lets more light be reflected. It makes a fish more visible. But in ultra black fish, the size, shape, and arrangement of the melanosomes cause them to direct light that isn't absorbed by one melanosome to the others in the layer. That would trap even more light, making it even darker. Oh my gosh, it has got to be so dark down there. Birds and butterflies can also be ultra black, but they do it a different way. Their feathers or scales have multiple layers of intricate, tiny structures. Intricate, I'm not sure what that means. Intricate, tiny structures to absorb light. The way the fish do it is simpler. If engineers could copy what the fish do, it may make producing ultra black materials easier. Hmm. So that's the whole entire article. I'm going to go back and whatever I circled in green, I need to go back and reread and try to find the definition. Or if I can't, I need to go look it up in a dictionary or Google. <laughs> All right, guys, that is how good readers annotate their readings.